First slide, resilience. What I'm alluding to here is the fact that the human body is very resilient. Okay, so the human body is not fragile. And it's very resilient, especially to stress. Okay, so I'm not here today to tell you guys that you must clear every ounce of stress out of your life to be successful. Okay, because that's not possible. Okay, work, family, you know, general life stress, that's a necessary part of life. You could almost argue that it's an essential part of life. And you'll never be able to get rid of all that stress and no matter how much meditation you do, and no matter how much you try and get rid of it. So the, some of the information and knowledge that we provide to you today might actually come across as initially confronting, okay? but it is not you know, designed to scare you. Okay? We're providing you with knowledge, because knowledge is power, and how do you expect to overcome you know, some of the negative effects of stress if you don't have any understanding about it? And this goes for every topic regarding fitness, training, nutrition. The more knowledge you have, okay, the better. So, you know, the body itself is conditioned to adapt and become more resilient to stress. Now, we all know, you know, that one person, or you know, we may all know a person who just always seems to be stressed. You know, something always t seems to pop up in their life that stresses them out. Yeah, you guys might be one of those people. Well, if we think about how stress has evolved throughout hundreds and thousands of years, and let's just think with an evolutionary perspective for a second. When I say evolutionary perspective, just you're referring to, you know, think about how the human race has evolved over the course of years. Because I think that's a very good way of thinking about you know, physiology and how the body works and stuff like that. The, the human body, over the course of years, has faced much uh, greater stresses than what we face nowadays. Okay, so if we think about it for a second, you know, maybe hundreds, thousands of years ago, food availability was very, very limited. So these people couldn't just walk down the street, go to McDonald's and buy you know, a 2,000 calorie meal for $5. Okay, there were times when the human race was faced with very limited food. And I'm sure that we all, everyone in this room probably knows how stressful dieting can be on the body. So dieting is a form of calorie deprivation. Imagine how deprived these people were of calories when you know, they were going through periods of famine. That's what we call these periods. Yeah, this happened. Okay? Um, these people, unfortunately, had no choice. Okay, and you know the only reason they're al we're alive or alive today is because the body was able to adapt to that stress and become more resilient. Okay, and you know, funnily en funny enough, you know, what do you guys think allowed these people to live when they went without food for like one or two weeks, or who knows how long? Does anyone have any idea what helped these people survive? Cortisol. Not necessarily. Any any idea? Adaptation. Yeah, kinda. So it's definitely a part of it. Okay. Body fat. Body fat is the human. So fat, adipose tissue, is as humans are most favorable and best as storage of energy. Okay. So we store energy in adipose tissue. Okay. When these people went, you know, specific period of time without food their body fat was providing them with energy to survive, okay? So why do you guys think it's so hard to lose fat these days? Because body fat is desirable for the body to hold on to. Okay, as soon as you start sending uh, semi-starvation signals to the body throughout a dieting phase, because you're not feeding the body with enough energy, body fat starts to send that and you know, your adipose tissue will literally tell the brain to increase your appetite because it thinks that it's going through a period of starvation. Okay, that's why it's pretty hard for some people these days to lose fat. As soon as you start losing body fat, your body wants to kind of bring you back, okay? That's part of the reason why. Okay, that's how our body has been conditioned to respond to, to, to the stress of dieting. Okay, we've also got, if you think you know, a little longer back, so maybe thousands of years ago when cavemen roamed the earth, they didn't have houses and proper shelters to live in, okay? And there was probably a time when they were at, in danger, you know, life-threatening danger, because they didn't have proper shelters, okay? It's pretty stressful. And there was even times when they probably had to go out and get their own food. Now, this is a pretty extreme picture, 
But at one point in our evolution, people would have had to go out and get their own food, okay? Because they couldn't just get food from anywhere they like, like we can these days, okay? I think that's true stress. And what about this? Does anyone know what I'm referring to here? Comfort? Comfort, yeah. So even more recent times, like maybe 80 years ago, air cons, heaters, they weren't around. So there was no thermal regulation. And thermal stress was a real thing. Like imagine going to sleep when it's like zero degrees without a heater, okay, or a proper shelter, okay? We don't tend to think about these things because these days, you know, we have pretty much have everything here for us, but we just still find things to be stressed about, okay? These days, we just, you know, the, the stresses we face these days are not comparable to what the human race has faced throughout its evolution, okay? Now, let's, I want you guys to chime in now, actually. So, what, what daily stresses do, do you guys face on a daily basis? Let's go, anyone. Work. Work, work. the main one, okay? What else? Traffic. Traffic. Kids. Yep. Kids. Fear, family. Family, yep. Money. Money, yeah, that's a good one. Relationships. Yep, okay. So, they are definitely all stresses. And I have some examples as well, so some pretty simple ones, okay? Dropping a glass of milk. I'm sure we have all, you know, done something stupid like this in the morning, and it's kind of just ruined the rest of our day. Like we end up being late to work. It's a snowball effect, right? And then work gets more stressful and things just kind of go on from there. Work, like I said, okay, tends to be very stressful on the body. You know, possibly even burning your toast. Sure, I wouldn't want to hear what some of you guys say when you, you know, possibly burn your toast and you're running late to work in the morning. And like someone said, kids, okay? But look at the, discrep the discrepancy here. Like the stresses are non-comparable. And this is why today, you know, we, we can survive all the stresses we face because we've been through so much more in the past. All right? Does this all make sense? Are you guys with me here? Yeah. So this is why I think it's super important to think about things from an evolutionary perspective when you're wondering why the body does a certain thing. You know what? At the end of the day, it all makes sense when you think about it. When you think about our evolution, how we've you know been conditioned um, to re respond to things over the years. Now, the way your body responds to stress is great because it protects you from the stressor, and we're going to talk about why and how soon. Okay, um, but you know what? These people here, they didn't have a choice when it came to the stresses they were facing. Okay, these days. We have a choice. These things here, they don't need to be stressful. Again, we're going to talk about you know, how to fix it and all these things soon. Now, the stress response that your body exhibits, as I said, keeps you alive. Great. It's there for a reason. But it's not very desirable when it comes to muscle growth, fat loss, and body composition as a whole. Okay? So, let's take this example here. The stress response that your body exhibits, whether it's dropping a glass of milk, or whether it's getting chased by whatever that is, lion, you know, it could be anything. Let's say it's a life-threatening danger. It's the same stress response. So if the stress response was a red circle, okay, it's the same response, but it's obviously a different degree. Okay, so the hormones that are released, the signaling that occurs from your brain all the way through to your body, and all the other reactions that take place, same thing, different degree. Now, thankfully, these days, we don't face anything like this anymore. Okay, sometimes unfortunate situations occur where, you know, uh, high amounts of stress will be exhibited, and I guess that's just a part of life. But for the most part, we exhibit these types of stress responses. The only problem is that we do that a lot, okay? Over time, okay, we might get sleep deprived, a lack of sleep, you know, that bigger circle there, um, stress from work, and all these other little things that occur throughout the day, okay? We just don't know how to, most people just don't know how to manage stress very well, okay? And you know what? We accumulate unnecessary stress from events and situations that shouldn't be stressful on the body. And then what happens is we get this, okay? So it ends up being pretty much the same thing. We get chronic stress, and this is a problem. Okay, so if I go back to this, 
these acute little stresses here, not much of a problem because your body can deal with it pretty easily. Hey, think about what we've been through in the past, yeah? What the body's been through in the past. But when it all adds up and it accumulates and we get chronic stress, hey, that's a problem. So if you are at this level, you know, you, you have no business tracking calories or worrying, you know, worrying too much about calories. It's probably gonna make things worse. What you should be doing at this point is reducing stress, okay? What is chronic stress? Is that just like where you're... So when I say chronic stress, I'm referring to um, you, you're feeling very stressed on a daily basis. It occurs on a daily basis. It's a chronic so thing. It's like being built up. Yeah, yeah, it's being built up. So you might get, you know, three of these on a daily basis, it starts building up, and then it just, you know, every day you just, everything just tends to stress you out. Okay? Chronic stress. Chronic meaning daily. It just occurs over a longer period of time. Okay? Whereas acute, when I say acute, I'm referring to just a very immediate, um, short term stress response. Okay? That's a problem. Now, we'll survive this stress, okay, because the body is more than resilient enough to survive this stress, but as I said earlier, it's going to interfere with your goals, okay? Is everyone with me so far? Yeah. Okay. Mm. So, I'm gonna ask you guys now, what is stress? Can someone tell me, what is it? Stress is so uh, not, not talking about the body now. Like what is stress? It's a chemical reaction. Yeah, it could be. So, um, stress is not necessarily something that we actually face in our day. And this is something that really I started to understand when I did my last bodybuilding contest prep 2017. So, obviously, going through a long diet, I was dieting for about seven months or so. And as I said before, dieting is a stress on the body. You start to perceive things a little differently when you're at that point. Um, and I was very stressed at that point. Okay, you can ask any of the coaches here, like, th like four weeks before my show, I wasn't even like coaching anymore. I was just following my clients around the gym. Okay, because I was just stressed and I wasn't really thinking about what I was actually doing. I was thinking about food half the time. And I'd get really stressed and worked, it, worked up about the stupidest little things like burning my toast, like I said before, or overcooking my oats, so there's something stupid like that, and that would just stress me out for the rest of the day. And I was under the impression that I was just facing all these stresses in my life. But that wasn't the case, okay? It wasn't until I realized that my internal dialogue, which I'm gonna talk about later, and I'm just referring to the voice in your head, you know, the voice in your head that tells you to eat that slice of cake when you don't want to, that's called internal dialogue. I started to realize that that voice in my head was just telling me that everything I was facing in my day to day life was stressful. Okay, so it got to the point where like, you know, just driving home, I'd just be stressed for no reason. I wouldn't even have the radio on because my vo the voice in my head was just talking to itself. Um, and I started to realize that I was just perceiving everything as stressful. Okay, like, yeah, I blew up my oats in the morning, I overcooked it, I could have just washed the, you know, washed the dish and made another batch of oats and it would have been fine. Okay, or even driving to work and there was traffic and I you know, got stressed about the traffic. Well, I can't really control the traffic, can I? Like, I was under the impression that all these stresses were just popping up and trying to ruin my diet. That wasn't the case. I was perceiving everything as stressful. So stress isn't necessarily something that you uh, face in your day-to-day -day life. You just face an event or a situation that your brain perceives as stressful. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a bit of an example. If I asked any one of you guys here today to stand up right now and tell me five major factors or important um, points about stress, you'd be pretty stressed, right? If I told you to stand up right now and tell me that on the spot, I think everyone in the room would be stressed. What if I had a stress expert in the room who's done 10 research studies on stress, someone like Samaya, possibly, if I told her to stand up and give me five important facts about stress, would that be stressful to her? She'd just stand up and give me five important things about stress. But it's the same event. I'm uh, like, the, the person is being faced with the same events, but the perception, there's a discrepancy in the perception, okay? 
Has anyone ever thought about stress that way?